Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Jess, a international multi-award winning portrait photographer and today we're gonna roast my photos. I feel so ill guys, honestly. I was in London last week and it's not COVID, don't worry, we're not, we're not COVID contagious right now, but London last week for the uh, awards evening for the societies. Super, super excited, super stoked to say that I have won the finalist awards in two different competitions at that night. So that was cool. I mean, the dress was a lot more revealing than I had planned. Dan got really drunk and it was a great night, okay? So straight off the back of that, I thought, why not implement the request from the request box, which is where you guys can request to have YouTube videos created, by Judy Cass, who uh, asked if I could look through some of my old photos and critique them on the YouTube channel. So basically, this entire video is thanks to her. And uh, to be fair, uh, this is, this is, I can't even look at them. Some of them are so bad, so bad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through images from 2009 all the way to 2021, okay? I've not brought anything in from 2022, but we've got a really good visual progression of my entire photo photographic career from horrendous to not bad but I thought I was amazing to uh, actually reasonably decent. The 61 international recognitions for my images from last year hopefully shows that I'm not totally Hopefully it'll be fun and yeah, let's not waste any more time. So on the screen right now, hopefully you guys can see my photographic career from 2009 all the way through to one of these two. It was the last image that was taken in 2021. So yeah, we kind of have everything. As you can see, really strong trend for dogs, but also throughout, and I haven't included some from kind of the middle years, but we do also have like horses popping up. Horses are like featuring in, in the thing and then also commercial work. So we also have commercial. So we're gonna look at these images and I'm gonna critique them, okay? And I'm not gonna hold back because Picky Patricia, that's my alter ego, by the way, if you're new here. So let's kick things off with 2009. So guys. <laughs> Oh, these are so bad. <laughs> why am I doing this? I want to do. I don't know why I'm doing this on like YouTube. Like, hey guys. <laughs> but everybody started somewhere, and I really hope that what this video does for you guys, especially when you look at these images, that you know anything is possible if you just put your mind to it and practice. Okay, so this was taken 13 years ago. Oh, it's so bad. Let's go ahead and like, have a look at this one all up close and personal. <laughs> so aside from the fact that the whole thing is basically clipped highlights, which is really, really bad. I, at the time, thought that this was a stellar shot, right? I was like nailing it, nailing it. So <clears throat> yeah, this picture is great because it's a little Tessie, but it's horrendous. Like it's just so bad. I can't even like at this stage, make a nice comment about it. It's nice that we've got a catch light in the eye, right? We've got a catch light in the eye, so this is really good. And actually, I don't think the white balance is too bad. Like, I had some of my basics done, and also it's sharp on the closest eye. So I feel like even 2009 me was nailing it with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about this one? Okay, so this is George. This was my pony. So I had this printed. I remember printing this. This was like, I was like, oh, this picture's amazing, right? I had this printed and it was like this, okay? Let me tell you guys, you probably can't tell from this, but the trees are in focus, right? The subject's not in focus. So let's just put it in the bin and look at the next one, which again, <laughs> number one, horizon is wonky, right? I mean, seriously, this angle, there is no point trying to save this image, but the angle, the horizon was wonky. We've probably got blown highlights going on, including on the subject. It, this could have been a nice picture if it was shot well. So the, the camera angle needed to be lower. The eyes, <laughs> anything at the front end of the subject in focus would be an improvement on this picture. And yeah, that's great. So let's move quickly past 2009 and walk straight along into 2010, where to be fair, I don't feel like I had a lot of improvement, but you guys may disagree. So again, little Tessie here, 
photographing in full sunshine, not the end of the world, quite a nice wider angle piece. Again, compositionally way too tightly cropped. White balance is actually good though. Again, my, my white balance, what is going on? I'm surprised. I think the focus is on the neck, so totally straight in the bin for that one. And also the horizon line is wonky, so. <laughs> this one of Grace is soft. Let's move along. Um, but it's a better, It's a. I feel like that is, you know, come on, let's look at the improvement here. We did improve also. We did improve, so I'm okay with that. So then I moved into a different home. I actually really like this shot. I remember feeling really proud of myself when I took that. And uh, yeah, he was fine, you know? Super nice, sharp eyes on this one, a beautiful color. I actually quite like this picture. Mm, I still do. This is Bella, oh, Bella Bear. Bella died uh, last year and um, still raw, still raw in that one. This I thought was great at the time. I was like, ha oh, Bola, nailing it. No, Jess. No, you weren't. Okay, so number one, we've got, and hopefully you're reading the trend here, wonky horizon. The horizon line is also going straight through the subject's head. Bad. That's bad. Don't want to do that. You want to give either above or below. But to be fair, compositionally, I feel like it's not bad. The shadows are lifted way too much, but actually, you know, it's not the most terrific thing. The tag's not great, let's be honest. Okay, let's move along. Then we've got 2013 where stuff started to happen. Right, first things first, let me go ahead and assess this because this is not, <laughs> this is, oh my goodness. There is so much wrong with this picture that it makes me feel a bit ill, like more ill than I currently feel right now. So, um, okay, f let's look at the positives. Let's frame it in a sandwich. If you don't know what that is, basically that's you start with something nice, you look at things to improve, and then you finish with something nice. So the eyes are in focus, which is great. It's a nice pose from the dog. Maybe I should save that one till the end. So the eyes are sharp. Let's look at what's wrong. Okay, so we've got blown highlights, I think. Oh, we don't. Very close to blown highlights, but not blown. Wow, okay, I thought this would be worse than it is. So, okay, so then my main issue is the fact that the crop is just way too tight. Like, the subject is looking in a direction. The space needs to go in that direction. This needed space above and probably to the left a bit. And also just is really bright. Oh, that is bad. Look at the cut on that. Can you see that? Let's move on. I couldn't even put that in a sandwich. This is Bella again. Oh, little superstar, isn't she? So this is actually quite a reasonable resolution, this one. It's not so bad. Um, good pose from the dog, very good pose. <gasps> Look, my composition started. What is this? 2013, 2013. I was showing the vibes, right? Really poor execution, but vibes of composition. So we've got whoom, horizon line not going straight through the head and brain of the subject. We've got foreground, midground, background. We've got framing elements coming in here. The most boring sky you could probably ever see, but it's not blown out. We've got chromatic aberration. <laughs> Yay, fringing. If you don't know what fringing is, you don't know how to fix it. There is a video on that. I will link that above. But we've got really bad chromatic aberration happening, probably because this is a really bad lens. And the only bit for me that really lets me down, you know, is this wooden bridge. Like, it's just really distracting. Why is it there? Why, why, I don't want it there. And also, I would have liked the lid on the space. Like, we've got frame, nothing. And then we've got frame, nothing. A lid, would have been super. But I mean, I don't think this is the most horrendous thing I've ever seen. I'm all right with that. Oh, the puppy. <laughs> okay, so this is an image from a shoot that I did in 2013. And I remember this shoot. This was like the best work I'd ever done. And like, I could get emotional talking about it. It was the first time I'd done, not the first time I'd done an in-person sales session, but it was the first time that somebody paid like what I thought was a lot of money for me doing photography. And so this this shoe will always live on in my head as being really, really important. I literally just got my driver's license. And yeah, I love it. So um, what could we improve in this? Well, aside from the fact that it's a little bit over sharpened and the legs, the front legs are too bright. So when you are looking at an image, I can't help but make this into more educational than it needs to be right now. But when you're looking at an image, your eye will always go to the brightest part. So if the brightest part is not the subject's head or where you want the viewer to look in the image, then you probably need to go ahead and do something about that to just go and tone it down. So I'm gonna pull the highlights and the exposure on the legs 
hopefully to illustrate this point. And so the differences before and after, and and the after theoretically your eye should go to the puppy's head first and then read the image rather than the before where you look at it and you're like pull straight here to the basket. So I mean that would probably be my main comment. Also I don't know if I love the composition and also the basket looks like it's floating but other than that I feel like we're doing well. Oh, belly. Oh, okay. So this is when I was like really getting deep into my black background work and I really enjoyed it. This is Bella again. The image itself is sharp in all of the right places. The composition is way too narrow for a pano. We needed more space above and below, but this image actually is technically not bad. Probably would pull down the highlights on the little Santa hat. This is too hot here. There's probably a bit of cleaning up to do on the floor, but actually this is not bad. Okay, let's do 2014 because this is where things get really, really interesting. Okay, this is 2014 for me. 2014 was the year that I became a photographer in my brain because I was like, man, I can do this now. I can pop out professional level, technically sound images on the daily without a shadow of a doubt. So we went from 2009 to 2014 before we hit this level. And as you can see, we're good doing action in studio, action outdoors, portraits outdoors is still very weak, but we have a couple here and then portraits in the studio. We've got event images, and then we also have rescue images. So this is a set of puppies from Jerry Green Dog Rescue. How could I improve this image? Probably use a different prop, because man, that shiny leather is atrocious. It's really just not helping. A nice little crate would have been good, and a bit less of a vignette. So that would be my main thoughts on this one, but still adorable. This one, I think, I feel like the eyes are maybe slightly soft. But this is Tilly and she's doing a great job. Alfie's ball image, apart from the fact we have banding in the JPEG, which isn't there in the normal one, there is nothing really I would alter about that one. Maybe compositionally. It would have been nice to see the other eye. This one I feel like it's a bit cool. Uh, there's just not a lot of contrast going on. This is one of my all-time favorite images, right? This is like legit one of my all-time favorite images. This is Spud and this was for a series I was doing for a book and the book was called Lick and Tell. And it was around about the same time as I was doing the Dog's Balls, which was that series. And when I did Lick and Tell, Spud was just awesome. He nailed it, absolutely nailed it. Now for me, the main issue with this image is not Spud, right? It's not Spud, it's not in the technical work, it's not in the photography, it's not in any of that. It's in the retouching, okay? The masking around the dog is not great. Remember at this time, I don't think selective mask and hair masking existed. And so, yeah, it's not a great mask. But aside from that, I really like that shot. So 2015 things started to go a little bit weird for me. I did some commercial stuff. I did small studio series and I was photographing more regularly out, outside for dog rescues. I don't really feel like there was a big progression between 2014 and 2015. I kind of feel like I'm kind of just doing the same stuff like over and over again. And then 2016, I got bored of playing backdrops basically and photographed a, just a little bit of bits and pieces. I also did a lot more commercial work in 2016. So I just want to pick up on this one because this is one of my, well, no, this is the single best selling image that I've ever shot, ever, like ever, ever, ever. And let me let me walk through it, okay? So it's front focused. It's front focused, I don't know if you can see that. The focus is here and the back of the eye is not sharp. So it's front focused. So technically, it's not good. It's not good. For me, I would put this in the bin now. It just goes to show, you know, how times change. So there's that. There is also a hair literally through the mouth. That is in the image that has sold around the world, right? There's also the collar that would have been so easy to remove, like really, really simple and straightforward. And there's also a yellow cast and reflection from the backdrop. All of these things could have been addressed and also more of a uniform backdrop placed on so that they didn't have the curve of the paper visible in the shot. It's kind of same thing for this shot. I like this one though, it's a little Alfie. And then we go into 2017. So I don't have many from 2017. We're looking at commercial work and it's, fine. I got paid for it. Jobs are good in. And then 2018. If you don't know what happened in 2017 and 2018, then there is a video on the YouTube channel that goes through that. I'm not going to touch on that today. Basically, my whole life fell apart and 
I sold all of my photography equipment. So that's what happened there. This was when I bought a, a new camera. So I was back shooting again, again, more commercial stuff. Highlights too hot in this one. That was a busy cafe, but still probably could have been shot better. I feel like it's wonky as well. Like, kind of go in off to one side there. This is sweet, I like it. Horizon going through the head could have been better. I mean, that's that. Okay, 2019, I literally have one shot. And it was Alfie hiding. The curve could be softer and he could pop a bit more. It's a bit flat. It needed different lighting, right? It needed different lighting. It needed lighting more harder. It needed har harsh, a bit of harsher light coming in on this one, I think. Probably a little bit more of the, the old dodge and burn contour going on up in there. Right, so then we get into 2020, which is like loads happen. So in 2020, I became a decent photographer. <laughs> That's not really true. In 2020, I developed my own workflow, my own style of work with a specific aim to win awards. Hence why I achieved the International Pet Photographer of the Year in 2020 for this style of work, right? So this is the style of work that is taught out literally step-by-step, step, start to finish in the online advanced outdoor canine portrait course of which nearly... I don't know the exact number actually to be fair but definitely over 200 people have taken that online course and are producing work in that style or integrating elements of that style into their own work so that was the year that this developed this is one of the first images that was shot using that style it was kind of the same time this image was one of the finalists at last weekend's awards this has been titled in multiple different organizations and is probably you know one of i guess my best images i love it it's of Dora the Malinois. It's a composite, but it's a composite that was shot all in that location. It's not like we did different things, but she is stood on actually on that log. So that's um, one of them. I also did more commercial work. So this has also been titled an international awards for commercial. It's a light painting kind of, it's a difficult concept to explain, but it's kind of a light painting. So there's 52 different images that go into this one and yeah that's that finn and the fairy was a highlight for a lot of you guys so finn and his little fairy friend that got me northern pet photographer of the year last year so that was fun for 2020 and then mia and solo and it was mia who made me want to go and get a spanish horse hence tuna and then 2021 so 2021 i'm kind of like deviating slightly away from the style from 2020 and you can see that my work just gets more more power to it. It's like boom, but still compositionally sound. These are all really well achieving images. They've achieved a lot in their little lifetime. That's really low res, but you can get a vibe for it. The wolves are good. The wolf dogs. That was from Project Wolf. I'll link a video about that above. And yeah, it is what it is. Would I do it differently? Hell yeah, I would. I would have shot it a little bit differently and moved myself a little bit differently. In the editing, I would not have absolutely destroyed the trees up here. If you can look at that, then, you know, I didn't do a great job there. And this is just Pippi and I love it to pieces, but you know, that's peep. This one, we were faulted at like international awards. So I can give an honest critique of this one. This one we were faulted mainly because of the tilt of the subject's head. We just needed a bit less of a tilt because you could see up a nose. So that made it drop from like a finalist to a merit in international print competition. But this prints beautifully. Oh, it's so vibrant. Honestly, it's gorgeous. This one is just, it's not really like, it just looks crunchy. Like it's very hard to explain. It just looks a bit crunchy and also like over sharp and, and her feet were muddy. It would have been nice if they were clean. Yeah. Oh, also I've just seen a line. Is that a mascara? <sighs> this did well. Feedback was that we wanted the tail. Okay, so the judges at the print comp that we could sit and watch the judging, the judges wanted the tail. And that was what pulled the points down. They also said that the highlights were a little bit hot. I would agree. Let me go and see what we're at with them. 92%, okay, so 92% on those highlights. Probably could have done with being about there for the back and then the head popping out. So yeah, that would be something to definitely look at improving in this image if it was gonna be used for something else. Also potentially bring back that branch just a little bit more so that it doesn't come into the subject space too much more. So that's Django, by the way. Frecky on the lock. Oh, Frecky is gorgeous. Now this is a, an interesting one and I wanna show you a couple of parts of this if I can. So guys, two versions of the same image on here, right? So 
Um, I've included in my little like rundown this image because this is the last of the final one, but there's a change, a very important change between this image here and this image here. And this one scored 90 plus at, and was a finalist at the competition in print, but this one was not. This one scored merits and like finalist level, so like 85 plus, but it couldn't get over 90. And so I did an amendment to it and then submitted it to a different competition and that was the amendment. And so what I'm hoping that you'll be able to see here is Frecky is stood here and the horizon line, do you remember me saying from earlier on? Do you remember? The horizon line is going boom, straight through the head, kind of the ears, but straight through the head. So what do we do? We move the horizon line. We move the horizon line before and after. Hopefully you can see the difference in the before and the after. So the horizon is being pulled down. Do you see that? So like the horizon's being pulled down and it was also balanced a little bit better for the white balance. I liked it blue but it was a point of contention. And also there was some kind of like rippling happening in the water. So I corrected all of those little defects and ended up with this. And this is the one that did really well. So how could we improve this one? How do we go from here up? To be honest with you, I'm not quite sure. Maybe the island placement, maybe we could move that around but I just love this. I'm gonna get it printed so big, like ridiculously big. I think it's really, really just special, special picture. So then the last picture would I guess be this one. So this is a fine art studio portrait of a horse and that's kind of like brings us back full circle. So we've gone from, in terms of the horses in however long it's been, 13 years, we've gone from there to there. I feel like that's quite a large change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've gone from there to there, and in terms of the dogs, we've gone from there to there, which I think again is quite a large change. For reference, that's a black Labrador, so the difference in the work is quite ridiculous. So uh, yeah, that was me roasting myself with probably the most embarrassing YouTube video I think I've ever done. Hopefully that was useful for you. If you're new here, by the way, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because usually I'm not quite this woo-woo. A little bit more serious than this most of the time. But yeah, that's kind of, this is kind of my little corner of the internet. And if you don't like it, you can leave and that's fine. I don't really care. Do you know what? My, I guess my favorite period was probably 2014. That 2014 period was really strong for me. I really enjoyed that. I was just, I was just testing stuff and trying things out. I'm really discovering myself and you know, part of me likes the work from 2014 more than the 2020 style, but a lot's happened to me in that time, right? I was like a happy-go-lucky young person and now I'm a miserable old person. So I feel like the vibe is also come down and become a little bit more serious, a little bit more sophisticated. And I think that just shows progression and your growth as a human being that the work changes to kind of match it. So yeah, that's me roasting myself. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully you can pull, I don't know, tips from it or you can pull kind of just general, just keep on doing the practice and keep on innovating and keep learning because your progression will be quite quick after that. The moments where I wasn't learning, I didn't progress, right? So that was that. But yeah, hopefully that was cool. I'm gonna have a nap and a cup of tea and I'll see you all again really, really soon.